What was it? It's my great gag, though. It's uh, how many sound engineers does it take to change a light bulb? Two. 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 One, two, two. Welcome to... Um, I don't know what to call this. Like, a, Is a video podcast a thing? Hello, Ian. Ian Marchant. My Jeff. I don't know how to Frank? describe you. Author, broadcaster, general all-round entertainer. Those will do. Those will do. Yeah. The idea behind this, yeah. this is going to be very hard for me, is that I'm making a video which is designed to be listened to rather than watched. Yeah. Instead of talking 10 to the long, I'm all excited. I'm going to talk slowly. I'm yeah. also going to try and just ask questions and then sit back and listen and, yeah. and talk the, the less. But here's the important thing. Um, you don't have to watch this video. You could try this, but we don't even have to look at the camera. Yeah. I'm sort of doing this. For I'm people, looking at you. For people for to click and play and then minimise the the and then yeah. listen to. Yeah, so this, like is a, a, this is a video for people to listen a to. A vodcast. I don't know what to call it. And worse than that is that I don't know what to call the series or the name because I basically I want to sit down and have some sort of half an hour railway railway chats with people so you're the first well done yeah um, <laughs> but I don't know whether to call it like rail chat or train talk and and yeah. whenever I say something talk because you get you already have podcasts which are like tech talk and stuff there's a really yeah. terrible it's not terrible there's a cheesy yeah. 1990s movie featuring Dolly Parton called yeah. Straight Talk where okay. she inadvertently becomes a Chicago talk host um, uh, like Agony Aunt presenter and yeah. every time I hear this, the phrase something talk I hear the Dolly Parton song in my head going yeah. straight talk straight talk that's all I hear every time yeah. so, choo choo chat <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Ian's my first guest because you've come up with the name <laughs> choo choo chat <laughs> please for this bit, look at the video camera. We didn't plan that. You no. you just you improvised that on the I spot, did. right? That I'm is afraid genius. It. <laughs> uh, Ian. Yeah. Ian. Yes. Hello. Hello, my friend. Why do you like railways? Seriously, this is very serious. Because I, I, in case you don't know, because I feel like I've hyped up Ian before, because you have a book out, which is how I discovered you, called Parallel Lines, which is 15 years old now. But you also did an amazing radio program for Radio 4, where you uh, you went to like New Haven and Teesside Airport. You looked at some of Britain's ghost trains and ghost railways. Yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, here's a man that is obviously of my ilk. You don't necessarily like sort of locos and writing down numbers, but you're fascinated by such things as ghost stations and infrastructure. But wh when wh wh where did it start for you? As a boy, do you remember seeing a train and thinking... I like the noise it makes, but I don't want to write down its number. How did it start? I mean, as a boy, I remember steam trains. I remember getting off steam trains with my old mum. And You're that old? I'm that oh, old. Goodness. Holding my mum's hand. Very tall woman, my mother. Holding her hand, like, you know, and getting off steam trains at, at, at Ash, in Ash Vale, on the, the uh, uh, kind of Red Hill to Reading line. How old were you then, and what, what year oh, was that? Kind of, been 1963, 64. Wow. So I'd have been four or five. What interested me, I mean, I became, I was a canal buff as a boy, and I became more and more interested in uh, choo choos, in, in trains as I got older, and as, the, and as I began to see the possibility of travelling by them, you know, because I, I couldn't drive as, as I became. An adult, and as I went to university, I went to university in Mid Wales. Uh, uh, Aberystwyth, is that correct? No, Lampeter. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. But you write in your book how you used to regularly take the train from, I want to say, Lewis. Is no, New Haven. Actually. New Haven. Sorry. Oh, hence you, how you know about New Haven Marine. Yeah. And you used to, t and it was you get the train into London across yeah. on the tube to Paddington or to Paddington, you, or, okay. and then or used, or Paddington to Carmarthen. Paddington to Carmarthen. Wow. Yeah. And that, and that a, last bit of the train from Swansea to Carmarthen is to me one of the great railway journeys in Britain. Okay. It's not very long lasting, but because it's next to an estuary. Uh, so I became more and more enamored of them. And then um, I had a, a girlfriend who was a straightforward railway buff and, and her thing was the underground. And um, when the chance came to do a book about it, so I, so I came to it from a position of sort of ignorance from, I wasn't a massive buff. I came to it from a, that is clearly an interesting thing to write about. I th you know, writers are often writing into a gap on your shelf. As a canal buff, what I'd wanted for years was one book about railways, 
which gave me something, you know, which gave me a one volume look at the growth and the birth of railways and how they ran. And you felt that there, there wasn't something like that? No. Was it because they were area or regional line specific? It was like, here's the history of the so-and-so line, but nothing about everything all in one. Well, they were sort of for train buffs. You wanted a train book, not for train buffs. Exactly so. And, and also, um, I'd begun to realise that the railway is a place. I mean, it's one place. The, the, the linked system. Um, That's, once you've gone, in railway terms, they call it paid side and non-paid side. Once you've crossed the, the, the gate line and you're on the paid side, you're within the one place that is the railway. You are. Gosh. Yeah. That's quite deep. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it, in fact, um, it, it's uh, because I'm interested in a new theory of knowledge, because you know, it's obvious that we need a new theory of knowledge at the moment. Go on. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering how deep this is going to go. <laughs> as deep as you like. Uh, and so I'm very interested in what's called object-oriented ontology, um, which would be happy to identify the railway as a place. So this is a place, the, the shelter at Broome, and the heart of Wales line is another place. But it also, it's like a tributary. It, it, it links into this great river that is the Marches line that takes you to Manchester, where you get on a train and you go to Scotland, where you change for Malague, and you go to Malague, and it's a place. It's, 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 as well as being lots of little things, it's also one big thing. You said that you were originally a canal buff. I'm a, I love canals too. Is the canal network one place? Ooh. That's the most interesting thing anyone's asked me today. Oh, just today? Not, yeah, not yeah, it, it is, yeah, because people talk about the navigable network, right? So you can get from Godalming, as it happens, to uh, Tewitfield Locks, north of Lancaster, and still be on the system, still be on this one... On one boat. On, on one boat. Yeah. Yeah, that's all doable on one boat. Slowly. <laughs> very, very slowly. Yeah, okay. take you a couple of months. So what, early on there was this sense that there was this one thing that was the railway. It's, it's a place and, and also the idea of parallel lines. I was living in Lancaster at the time. My girlfriend was in London. I was going up and down on the railway. It's horrible. It was really horrible. I'd be sitting was, outside the lavatory. Was this when it was BR, before privatisation? Oh no, this is, we're talking post privatisation okay. now. So was it, was, it, was it Virgin or was it someone else other than Virgin? It was, um, yeah, so this, I'm talking kind of late 90s. Okay. I can't think who the franchise holder was back then. No. Who was the first franchise holder? People in the comments will be telling, screaming at us, telling us who the first franchise holder of the, of the West Coast Moment was, because yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. we're going to touch on British Rail and privatisation in a minute, so be, have that answer ready. Oh, but, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. But what, you had a terrible journey going up and down? I mean, hundreds of terrible journeys. And it was the time when all the crashes were happening. And So you had, I'm trying to think, what there was, there was two on the East Coast Main Line. There was the one at, was it at Big and Good H? Goodness. Uh, yeah. Hatfield. Hatfield was one of them. Yeah. I remember the one just out of Paddington, Ladbroke Grove. That, yeah. was, that was back yeah. in the 90s. Yeah, uh, there was another. Thing. There was a big spat. Can't remember. Mm. So there was there was a spate of crashes. I spent too many trips sitting outside the lavatories. Not once with Jeremy Corbyn. I was going to say that's now known as doing the Corbyn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I think that should have entered railway, you know, slang. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so these horrible journeys, and yet, as you go through crew, people taking pictures, people loving it, people loving this horrible experience that you're having. They don't care that you're having a horrible experience next to the lavatories or the appalling stench of a pendolino. <laughs> I think some of our railway fans would argue that voyages, cross-country voyages, are worse than oh, pendolinos. Right, that's, yeah, that's is, the is that, is that, you see that <laughs> sound little I know about? Right, so the, 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 this is why you and I are of one mind, because neither of us like spotting trains, but oh. we're fascinated by the network and the infrastructure and how it's all how it's all tied together yeah so tell me quick so then the, did somebody approach you to make the book or did you go to a publisher I've got an idea for a book how did you sell the idea for a book about trains that wasn't about trains <laughs> it was uh, it was a bit of both somebody approached me I came up with an idea they lost their job <coughs> I liked the idea so I liked the idea of the parallel lines 
of the, the idea that there's a, as, as well as this railway that we start with, there's a dream one that has steam trains and apple cheeked children <laughs> saying cheerio to the driver and, and porters. You know, you know, and so that the nostalgia of it is somehow bound up inextricably with the actual railway. I do, as people know from my videos, I do attempt to wave at drivers. And often they, they still do wave back. Oh, yeah. You You're get, very good. You that, get, thank you. I you, mean, that's one of the <laughs> things that's nice that you say, thanks, driver. Yeah. Well, I'd even do it. I'd even do it on buses in London. Sometimes the London bus drivers look at me like, who's that weirdo? But I quite often say, thank you, driver, as I get off a London bus. Yeah. Because I'm quite sure that that's the first time that they've been thanked all day. Yeah. I mean, round here, <laughs> you, you thank the bus driver okay. because probably you know them. So when you went on your book journey, you made multiple trips over a span of several weeks or months. But one of the things I remember you do in your book is that you take other books with you. So you sort of had, like, name some other titles of the books that you read. Well, the, the Railway Traveller's Handybook. So as you, and you genuinely read some of these books as you travelled? Yeah. Did Adventures you... of a Garden Railway. That's a superb one if you ever find that. Do you remember ever sort of being on a train, reading a book and going, oh, and sort of learning a few things and being like, I didn't realise that that was the case. What things did you learn whilst you read and travelled yourself? Well, I, I, I learnt almost everything while I was doing this trip because I'd come, as I say, from this position of ignorance, of just being a sort of ordinarily interested traveller. You, what, not that <coughs> sort of rosy-cheeked, nostalgic look of how... That, is that, did you have that image as well in your head, that that's what the trains could, should be like? Yeah. I, I, I mean, my conclusion is that I, I call for a non-Euclidean railway. <laughs> You're going to have to explain that, <laughs> not just for me, but for several other people who just went, what? <laughs> yeah. Parallel lines can't meet. And if this I was... is getting really deep. Yeah. I had no idea this would get so deep. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Euclidean mathematics, right? Gosh. So, if you like, you how do you reconcile this kind of grim railway where people are sitting outside the lavatory, in the worst case scenario, with Jeremy Corbyn, um, and, you know, the cafe stopped working and there's some people with those cans of tenants with pictures of ladies on the side and, and someone's thrown up and it's horrible and there's people screaming and the train stopped and everything's gone horribly wrong. And, that, and, and that's just Southern, you know, going from London to Brighton. Yeah, that, I mean, no, but really it is. It is, Jeff, as you know. Well, it's, yeah. I, you I, know, my I, daughter commutes between Brighton and London. Today, still. Yeah, and, and every day she posts on Twitter rude words about her experience, you know, a lot. Wow as against this wonderful place where it's a place where as a divorced parent mm. I spent a lot of weekends my poor daughter now she moans about going from but in her childhood she had to go to the Blue Bell every weekend does she travel presumably at commuter time is she traveling she does, at commute, yeah. so my theory what Vicky and I got out of all the stations is that there are there are I think in your book you went the there's two worlds, there's reality, and then there's that, there's the, the rosy cheeked kids. But for us, the, 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 the sheer the thing is, is that there's the commuter railway and then there's the off peak railway. Yeah. And obviously, the off peak railway, when trains are less crowded and, and not so squashed together on, on a compacted network, there's less chance of things going wrong. And that, yeah, and most tweets about, oh, the railway is terrible, happen during peak yeah. commuting hours. Right? So, in short, what you've learned <laughs> is that the off peak railway is the non-Euclidean railway. There we go. Because it's the <laughs> moment... Hang on, we've come to that conclusion 14 <laughs> minutes in, and we've still got 15 minutes to yeah. fill. <laughs> so we, so, so we it, peaked too early, Marchand. Yeah, come on. <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> it, it becomes... So it's possible on an off-peak railway to start to glimpse the golden age to some extent. That's not true. Of course you can't glimpse the golden age. But but you can begin to imagine it. You you get some inkling of it. And that and that's what I meant by, you know, how do we bring back the charm and nostalgia and dreams into that kind of hard headed we're just moving people up and down. So think of one of those illustrious journeys from Lancaster to London, yeah. or London to Lancaster, yeah. and, and the franchise holder whom we still can't remember. <laughs> when was the last time you made that journey? And I assume that would be on Virgin West Coast Mainline. I, well, what, I was it, and basically, was it better? Has it got better in the last 20 years? I mean, the last time I made it was um, 
just before, just after Christmas, when I was going up to Glasgow. Okay. And and I so I so I started on the Heart of Wales line at Knighton. Nostalgia, dreams, mm. off peak, lovely, one carriage, and the further you go, the worse it gets. And until in the end, I I was on trains that were stopping where we were. Um, having to do between Carlisle and Preston a bus replacement service down the M6 where I was stuck next to an insane conspiracy theorist on a coach. So, so we're still not there? Are no. You, are you saying, then, are you, go on. When, <laughs> when I got back on the train, Will Farrell's voice in the lavatory. That's right. I remember you emailed me saying, what in, on earth's name is this? Yeah. So... You've got a man's voice in the lavatory. Imagine you're a nursing mother, an old person, a sick person, yep. someone from a different religious tradition from ourselves yep. who don't share. A foreigner. Right, for some reason, I don't know why, but it's only the British who think going to the lavatory is funny. I mean, it clearly is funny, mm -hmm. but lots of people don't think it's funny. Yeah, it's just a functional thing. Is. They want to get in, do their business, get out as soon as they can, yeah. and on, on with You don't day. want any... But jokes they, at all. But there was a promotional thing that was being run and Will Ferrell was talking about his latest film or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It? And you yeah. were you were aghast, weren't you? I was. <laughs> you I was were, completely aghast. I wasn't you feeling were, great. You I was in a bad mood. I'd been banged up with this you, conspiracy theorist and now I'm trying to do your business. And I've got Will Ferrell going, ha 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 ha! <laughs> Honestly, if I could have killed Will Ferrell at that moment. <laughs> so I didn't think it had improved at all. I suppose it has in some. I don't know. So I hate the idea of you know the shops. It's all, it's all shabby. The shop. Yeah. What shop? On, on, the, on yeah. Like the the snack buffet bar. Yeah. I'm all about the trolley, Jeff. Well, then you well, then you would like. Oh well, then travel on GWR Great Western, the new Intercity Express trains, the Class 800s, where they've done away with the buffet, and it's just yeah. But the slightly bizarre thing is because instead of having one. To have a ten car, there's oh, some nine car units. You know what's coming. To, ha do. to have a ten car train, it's two five car units, and they now have to have two people with with two trolleys to up because because you can't you can't get through the car. No, <laughs> but you like the buff. You like the trolley oh, car. I, I like a trolley. No, but hang on. But I in a few weeks time, I did it the other day. I went on. Um, what, what I think one of the last greatest journeys in London you can do is to get the the Norwich train out of Liverpool Street, where again it's a proper. I, I want to say. Class, I don't know the number, 90, 91. See, I don't know the numbers. Yeah. But again, but your hall, it's a proper loco hauling carriages, and there's a buffet car. Um, yeah. For me, it's like what you can't do on a plane. Why I hate a plane is because you're stuck in your seat, but on a train, you can get up and you can walk to the buffet car. That's oh, great. Yeah, I like the walking. But you but you like being served by a trolley or not? Because yeah. like, I don't. See, I don't mind the trolley. I like the trolley, but I, but I like the buffet, but I don't want a shop selling the Daily Mail. A tattered book of crossword puzzles. Right. Some mouldering... You know, are the sandwiches any better? I don't know. What I'd really like is um, my dinner served to me. That's what I want. Brown Windsor soup. Well, have you ever done one... GWR, they have a, they have a Pullman diner service. There's like one a day in Wales. No. And you can get... And I haven't done the one that goes up from Cardiff to Holyhead. Either. Oh, that's the one I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. No, there's one out of Paddington that goes, I think, to Cardiff and Swansea. And you're right. And then there's a Holyhead to Cardiff as well. And again, yeah. they serve you the, the, no. they serve you the, they, they serve you the, 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 the dinner. Okay. No, I haven't. You, but, should, you but, should pitch that as a radio programme idea. It's a thought, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll do it as a video. Yeah. <laughs> but living in the country, uh, it's the railways are very important to me. So I'm using them a lot to get to London and to get to Glasgow and to get to the places where I'm sort of working or appearing. This is fantastic. I used the Heart of Wales line to get to Carmarthen recently. Change it to Italy, obviously. Was it that easier to do than drive? It was easier to do than um, was it more pl When you realised you could do that journey by train, did you think, yay, a train journey? I thought, double yay, a train journey. Okay. See, so you, at, at the heart, you do... Oh, I completely love it. You talk about mm, the Virgin Shop and all, you know, West Coast Main Line and mm, Corbett, but you, you do love, you love it, really. I do you? love it, yeah. But I oh, just but wish... Why? Go on, oh, sorry, go on. Right. I wish that we could run the railways. <laughs> 
you and me. Yeah. The round, well, yeah, and, and, and your audience, and because we'd have some really interesting things to say. I do, it, it's great. And of course there are, yeah. I realise, enthusiasts, enthusiasts, mm -hmm. there's that, some that people one. running, you know, who are involved, I'm, I'm not denying that entirely. To, in order to bring that love, that, that third rail, the, the non-Euclidean railway, it, it needs people who really care and have, who have really thought about what it means to travel and not just the failing bottom line. You know, not just how can we maximise our return from this, but how can we make this a, a, a really pl a pleasurable experience that mean people want to take the train. As you know, you're a great advocate of this. People, ha we have to get off the roads. It's, it's not. It's I'm, not. I'm an advocate. I'm the build it and they will come out uh, advocate. And I've seen today on the Hot Wales line just four, two on a Sunday, but four services a day. It's like, well, and someone said, well, yeah, but would people use it if there were six or eight services? Yes. I really think they yes, would. Yes, they I would. Really they they would. would. You just, it might need a little bit of advertising or marketing, but yeah. go, look, you can now get a train from here to here at this time, and people be like, great. And they, yeah. they would love it. But you mentioned a minute ago, P word, profits mar margin, I'm going to mention the other word, and this might be a question which I ask all guests. If this, if this video isn't a disaster and people yeah. love it, <laughs> and please write in the comments, yeah. who would you like me to get on as an interview for half an hour? And I'll ask this same question to everyone that I hopefully have in this series. Privatisation. <laughs> Is it better now? There's always some people that go, bring back British Rail. Would we really be better off if we brought back British Rail because surely even when it was nationalised we had problems and surely surely there's good and bad for both and on balance does it really matter? Of course there were there were problems there were you know loads of problems uh, I think it matters a lot that we control our infrastructure that you, you, you know that, that, that we say okay these are the lines this is what's going to happen these are going to be the services that that we don't divorce the the running uh, the, the looking after the line from the running of the services that the services all add up that a service doesn't get penalized you know if you if you wait for a connection you can't wait for a connection because you're going to have to pay penalties that's madness so again very often i've been stuck at newport having missed the last train because the train from london is 10 minutes late and the last train heading north has gone and they've had to provide taxis for us it's it's the and that's, not and that's the same company that's all or is that gwi and ariba no, not Ariba's not Ariba. not talking to each other exactly yeah <coughs> no so, one talks to one another or, or it's very difficult to see so when i was up at buez up and uh, pronounced it right a uh, request I was, that was impressive but they at sudbury they very clearly hold the connection because the sudbury commuters like, no, no, you hold our connection for us. They, they make enough fuss yeah. that they hold that train. Yeah, Would maybe be because mile. when a train gets to sub, you know, it's not getting in the way. There aren't perhaps kind of knock-on. That's on true. It is just a, bra a back and forth branch. Yeah. But at Newport, but no, do, do trains get in the way? If, if and that's why, is that part of the problem? They have to, you know, it, it has to leave platform one, otherwise something else gets blocked. According to the people who put me into the taxi cursing every time, <laughs> it's because they're penalised for holding trains up. But then it must... So you're suggesting you know, that five, ten minutes. So, so, it's, so, it's so more nothing adds up. So it's more cost effective to put people in taxes than it does to pay the, 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 the penalty for being late. Yes. That does seem a bit bonkers, he says, mildly, politely. I think it's bonkers. I think it's bonkers. I think it's totally bonkers that we don't make it add up. And we have to get people off the roads. Rail, it seems to me, is the best, easiest, most efficient best understood option that there is. In order to do that, we have to somehow be able to commit as, I hesitate to say a nation, because it's a thing I have come to loathe over the last couple of years. But as a society, we have to be able to say, well, you know, we've got to get off the roads, and so therefore we have to have better trains. And it doesn't matter if people make or do not make money from it. Money, you cannot spend money when your sea levels are rising, when you know, when 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 the world is in such peril, you know that we're sort of going. Yeah, I know we're drowning, but the war's here. But 
you've got to make a bubble too, haven't you? And you're under. No. The railway's the best thing we have, I think. So in the other station's video where you popped up literally for three minutes, and that's partly why I got you back, because it's like, I want to chat to you for half an hour and have it yeah. all uninterrupted. Yeah. I can't remember whether I suggested this to you or not. I feel like I may have put this to you, but my great idea, yeah. <laughs> in my experience, just in, in, in the places I've worked in my life for the last 20 years, is that, and all, just from personal experience as well, things I've tried to manage, is that the larger something is, and this is logical, the larger something becomes, the harder it is to manage. It's definitely so in terms of companies where there's people. If you've got a small business of six people, you're all in the same office, brilliant. If you're in a company of a thousand people, spread over different locations, that's harder to manage. So if we were to renationalize and be one British rail again, that's obviously, that's many thousand people spread across the country. So here's my great idea. Yeah. What we do already have are the 20 or so tox, depends how you define them, you know, southeast and southern, west, northern, or whatever, managing their own bits. So my great idea is, is what if we said, right, as the franchises run out, we don't redo the franchise. We, that's the slow migration back to a linked up network. But we sort of, we keep the, the 20 separate sort of, so southeastern keep managing their bit and their bit only, and southern do their bit and their bit only. But we encourage them to actually talk to each other and have maybe the same font and the same colours so that it look as a brand it's sort of renationalized but on a managed level it it's kept in 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 the 20 or so bits that we have does that make sense yeah i, I don't know what to call it but it's sort of somewhere between privatization and nationalization it's somewhere yeah. in the middle yeah. or is that just a, a, a ridiculous cop-out idea or have i cracked it is that genius <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> no, of course it's genius. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course there are ways that you would, you, you know, there's something in that that you would do the management or the uh, post-1923, the what, the grouping. So, you know, there came to be four-ish. There you, were more than can four. Can you name them all? I can. Uh, Southern. Southern, Great Western. London North East, London Midland. London Midland, yeah, all yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but of course that wasn't all. I mean, just up the road in Craven Arms, you still had the Bishop's Castle Railway limping into the hills, which was always in receivership. For, uh, it, uh, a year after it opened, it went into a receivership and remained receivership for the whole of the 70 odd years of its existence. Is it a heritage line now or is it abandoned? No, it's abandoned. It's probably abandoned. Yeah, it really is. Uh, there's another one off from Craven Arms that goes across to um, Ironbridge, the northern part of which is still used for freight. Um, so, yeah, you know, it was always creaky. There was always too much that, you know, of course it needs some efficiency. But to me, the, above all, it's lunacy that there are profits being made off the railway. This, this is the great, we've hit our half an hour, so this is the great. Right. I feel like yeah. this, is, this is the start of the summing up. It's lunacy, go on, because... It's lunacy. When the train turns up, it sort of says Arriva Trains Wales, a Deutsche Bahn company. Mm. <laughs> People are making profits. Why aren't those profits going directly back into improving services and improving access and improving um, facilities and making more regular trains and, and 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 allowing volunteers in the heart of wales line is very good for volunteers. this is what you mentioned in all the stations i said to you then what's the one thing you want to see and you were like you were very pro community railways i am right? yeah okay. i really am and the heart of wales is very strong on that yeah lots of uh, hub staff starting to use the buildings in new ways people taking pride in the stations and I can see, though it hasn't happened yet, and an obvious place to try it might be, say, Seven Valley, that trains coming into Kidderminster from Birmingham would marry up with the steam train heading on up to Bridge North and back. So you would start to be able to use these sort of lines, perhaps in a mixture of, of voluntary stuff and officialdom. Ian, we've done half an hour. I know. <laughs> we could chat for longer. I know. Let's not. Let's go and get some tea. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what we're in need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Geezer. Links to Ian's book below. The books. Radio books. 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 I'll put in your whole website this time. All right, right? Yeah. People can go and just buy everything you do. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Radio 4 program, I don't think, is... It pops up on iPlayer now and then, and, and then it expires after Yeah, I don't know days. why. Because that's just the way the BBC works. But some things are on forever. But 
So, it's so my program about psychogeography always been there. Yeah, but that's because you're not Top Gear, you know, or EastEnders. Yeah. Try doing that. Try being Top Gear or EastEnders next time. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, thank you, mate. Bye. Hooray! Let's go. <laughs> Shall I?